when we're talking about basic arithmetic with vectors, we have to redefine what we were, what we know and learned in our scalar uh, quantities. When we say we multiply two numbers together, most of us know how to do this. However, when we're dealing with vectors, we're, we have to redefine what it means to multiply two vectors. You've probably already seen one of the ways to multiply two vectors. We call that the dot product or the scalar product. But we're going to look at the vector product. It's a second way to multiply two vectors together. And the vector product, we sometimes call it the cross product because of the symbol we use, but the major difference of a vector product is that we're going to actually get a new vector out at the end. So a vector crossed into a second vector is going to give us a new vector, a third vector. The other thing that's different, very different from a vector or cross product compared to a scalar product, is the cross product uh, is going to be a measure of how perpendicular two vectors are. Our dot product or our scalar product was a measure of how parallel two vectors are. So they're kind of exactly opposite of each other. So when we actually look at what they are, we're going to have to uh, deal with them in a different way. And they, you'll see that they actually are kind of exactly opposite of each other. The one thing that most people find very difficult with cross products is that we have to deal every time in three dimensions. Even if our vector is only in two dimensions to begin with, we only have an x and a y, we're going to be dealing with a third dimension when we uh, get our answer. So let's say we have a vector a and it lies exactly in the x direction. So my x axes my y-axis, and my z-axis. My z comes out of the screen, but I can't draw in three dimensions very well. So x is along the uh, screen, y is up the screen, and z is out of the screen. So a is purely in the x direction in this picture. b, well, I just randomly drew it somewhere in the x-y plane. So it has x components, and it has y components. So when we take our cross product, again we have a mutual angle between them, and any two vectors are always going to have a mutual angle measured from one to the next. And if we measure it from A to B, we get this angle phi. One thing we have to note is that vector products have an order. So if you take A multiplied into B, or the cross product of A into B, it is uh, uh, different than B into A. It's not cumulative. It doesn't have that property. So we have to be very careful on it, but we'll kind of discuss that in a little bit. But if we get A, if we have A in this plane and B in this plane, our resulting vector, this orange vector here, is actually going to be in a different direction. And we'll be able to determine the direction based off of either the math that we can use, or there's a shortcut which we'll call the right-hand rule, and we'll actually deal with that in a separate video. But, A crossed into B, mathematically, again, a little cross for our cross product, so A crossed into B means we take the magnitude of A, multiply it by the magnitude of B, times the sine of the angle between them. So when we did the dot product, there was a cosine here, the cross product has a sine. So they're kind of opposite of each other. Well, mathematically, we can figure out if we have our components. And before we saw a way to deal with our components, but this is a lot more complicated because we have to get a vector out at the end. So the x component of a result vector is going to be the y component of the first, the z component of the second, minus the z component of the first, times the y component of the second. That'll give us our x component. There's a similar one for the y components. We get z's and x's give us y directions. And the last one, if we want to get our z direction, we get our x and our y's minus our y's and our x's. This is a lot of numbers to remember, but there's kind of a normal way that people look at it is they look at it go y, z, flip back to x. We look down here, x, y, z, z, x, y, they all follow this cyclic order through. Um, but most people don't actually remember this. We remember the first one, and then we remember the uh, we remember the, the shortcut, the right-hand rule to give us our direction. But just to show you what happens, if A is in the dire x direction and B is in the x and y directions, 
there's no Z, there's no Z, no Z, no Z. So neither X nor Y components uh, are there at the end. Only an X component and a Y, and actually this term will even drop because there's no Y component for my first vector. So you can see that we only get one part from our Z component, and that's why it sticks in this third direction. And that's why we have to deal with three dimensions when we deal with these things. But again, the resultant of the cross product is a vector, so we have to be very careful what components we're using and when we're using them. Let's look at a few quick examples. And these same examples we saw before. So let's cross A into B. Well, A is in the X direction, B is in the X direction. Well, there's two ways to do this. We can look at this. A and B both are positive values. The sine of the angle, well, our angle in this case, since they're in the same direction, is zero. So sine of zero is zero. We get zero at the end. Or we only have X components, so we have an X here, no Z. We have an X here, no Y. The only times that we have, we don't ever have an XX. There's no XX, there's no YYs, there's no ZZ. So by these guys down here, we'll never get a, a true answer. Again, positive X, negative X, they're parallel, or what we call anti-parallel in this case, but they're not perpendicular. There's no perpendicular components sine of 180 degrees, they're opposite of each other, sine of 180 degrees gives us zero, so we're back with this, this guy here, um, with the cross product being zero. And finally, let's say A is in the y direction, B is in the x direction, the angle between them is 90 degrees, but our angle is measured from the first vector in a counterclockwise manner to the second. Or since we're going backwards in this, uh, we're going in a non-traditional way. We normally measure angles from positive x in a counterclockwise manner. Since we're going in the opposite direction, we're going to see that we get a negative z component. So it actually shoots into the page away from us. And if we look at the components, we can find that we have a positive y for our a and a positive x for our b, we see the negative sign shows up here and that's why we get the negative z direction is because of this term. We don't have x and y. If we had b crossed into a then we'd have a different set of uh, variables and we'd actually shoot in the other direction. So the right hand rule will hopefully give us a visual to give us some more intuitive or just a quick little way to figure out exactly the direction. It's pretty easy to get this part. It's hard to sometimes get that. So in the next video we're going to look at the right hand rule and a shortcut for helping us solve cross problems.